everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio, and I'm bringing you another mixed media altered shipping tag for AJOS Abstract August, which is a prompt event that we're having over in Art Joy of Sharing Art Community on Facebook. So I just want to let you guys know this is so fun. I hope more people will join. There hasn't been very many people joining in, and I think the reason for that is because people are scared to commit. You don't have to commit, people. You can make one abstract thing. You could use all the prompts on one piece if you want to. You can use no prompts. Just make something abstract. Or you can use the prompts as a guide. You don't have to go in order. You don't have to use every prompt. You, <laughs> There are no rules here. This is just an encouragement for you to try some abstract art, some art that doesn't have a focal image slapped in the middle of it so that you are, to, you know, telling the viewer what to see, but more using the emotions of color and shape to express something. That's all this is. It's not hard. It's, it doesn't have a lot of rules. It's, you know, it's just for fun. And I, I want everyone to join in. I'm, I'm having a blast with this. And it's just, I'm just using these tags that have stuff on them already that I need to use up. Um, I don't know if that's what I'll use all the way through, but it's it's really fun to do it. It's quick. It's, you know, 45 minutes probably at the most of your day to just sit down, do something creative, uh, do some, play with color. Um, that's what I've been doing with mine so far is using my color wheel and, and taking <clears throat> whatever color is on the shipping tag already and then coming up with a color scheme. So that's all I've been doing, and I, I want everyone to join in. I'm, I'm disappointed that there's not very many people playing along, and <clears throat> maybe maybe you're too busy, or you know, you've got other things to worry about, but if, if you're just afraid to, to try, don't be. Don't be afraid. Just get out some stuff, play with it. There's no rules. There's no abstract August police over in Art Joy of Sharing or wherever you post your thing. Just use the hashtag if you want to post it on Instagram, Facebook, in the group, out of the group. I don't care. I just want people to play with me. Come play with me. I'm having fun. I want everyone to have fun. This this being stuck in quarantine is so sucky. I'm so tired of it. I want out. Out. I want out. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where I'm at. So this tag already had some molding paste through a stencil on it. And then there was some, what looks like maybe watercolor over the top of it. Something that um, soaked in and was bright, but not super bright. And so I decided that the color that I would focus on on this this tag that's already on there is yellow green because there's a lot of that limey color coming in from the upper right hand side. So then I got out my color wheel and I said, okay, what what kind of color scheme do I want to do? Because that's what I'm playing with along with my abstract is playing with complementary colors, playing with color schemes, um, thinking about that in addition to the prompt, which is slanted, by the way. Um, yellow greens, complementary colors, red violet. Do I want to go with that, or do I want to maybe do um, the split complementary yellow, green, red, and violet? Maybe, or do I want to do the triad, which is yellow, green, red, orange, and blue, violet? Or maybe I want to do I don't know the tetrad. Maybe um, I don't know. I couldn't decide, so I decided to just go with complementary. So I picked out some papers out of my huge piles of paper, with, which I still haven't sorted, by the way. I know some of you would like to purchase some of it, but I haven't even started to sort it. I have piles and piles. I mean, it's going to be a big job. So I picked out some papers that were red-violet, and then I also thought that uh, in the triad, the red-orange um, was, was a good color to go along with this, like if you want three colors. And so I also picked a piece that had some some pinks on it, which are close to the red violet tints, but then also some orange because I thought that that would be good combos. And because the prompt was slanted, I wanted the perspective to seem as if here's a background. Here's a, here's actually something that looks kind of like a brick wall background with 
slanted shapes on it so that your perspective looks slanted because it's in contrast to what's in the background, which is these rectangles from the stencil. That's a, I think it's called brick and mortar stencil, something like that. From It's one of my very favorites from Stencil Girl products. And so that's that's what I went with. I went with slanted triangular pieces going off the page, um, you know, breaking the borders. And I glued those all down after I had cut them. Some of them, one, one piece of it was watercolor paper. Then there was some a couple pieces of printed uh, background paper that I'd made during uh, digital. Um, you know, I do that digital background swap four times a year with the group and a couple of them are that and then the other one the kind of bright one with a lot of shapes that's Upo paper which is a plastic type of a paper with a stencil from Gina B. Aaron's designs and uh, alcohol ink and you just you put the Upo paper down you put the stencil over the top and then you just drip alcohol ink on it and let it dry let it completely dry and then when you pull away the stencil you have all these interesting shapes and alcohol ink super bright so you have a lot of color too so those those three pieces are from a piece of that that i made a while ago because i just have scraps of stuff everywhere that's all there is to it so then i wanted to pump up that yellow green color and maybe a little bit of the turquoise because it kind of blends with it in the background so i used some acrylic ink which is little bottles of fluid very highly pigmented pigmented ink in little dropper bottles and i dropped a little bit on there and then then uh, spread it out with a wet brush to kind of um because the background was looking a little bit pale at that point since i put these really bright uh, complementary pieces on there so after that was all dry i decided it was time to make some of them uh, have some shading and shadows and make them more interesting make them stand out and so i'm using a stabilo all pencil this is a pencil that has a highly water reactive i mean highly water reactive pigment in it and i can blend that out i can make a line and then blend it out into kind of a watery look uh, using a water brush and so I'm not tracing around everything you'll notice. I'm not like making a line around every single single thing. I want there to be shadows on one side, like maybe there is some light coming in from the top and these pieces are not flat and they're making a shadow. And it also emphasizes that slanted line. I wanted to make sure that you got it. It's slanted. These lines are slanted, right? <laughs> so I'm putting that on and then blending it out with a wet, uh, water brush which is a brush that has water in the barrel if you don't have a set of these things man you should get them because they're awesome <laughs> you can blend anything with these anything from acrylic markers to this type of pencil to watercolor pencils uh, acrylic paint neocolor crayons I mean you can blend any of this any type of thing with the with these brushes it has a synthetic brush holds up to anything it's got water you just squeeze and a little bit comes out and helps you blend so i love them i love them so then the next things i got out these are also from stabilo which makes this black pencil that you see so many of us use all the time and these are the woodies so these i think were designed for children probably because they're big and fat and chunky but they have the same type of a water soluble uh, pigment stick inside of them and they, they come in bright colors because they were I think designed for kids and their fat little little hands you know with their chubby little fingers can hold them but they're super fun for just normal normal people that aren't kids um, they're they're cool so I'm mark making and also pumping up a little bit of that red uh, red violet color on one of the pieces I was just added a little bit of the red violet then I'm mark making and adding in some white marks and I'm adding in some of this yellow green with the pencil into some of the the um the really crazy Upo paper didn't have any of that color in it so I wanted to bring it in just a little bit and then I also wanted to bring in some orange 
uh, pump up the orange a little bit. So I'm adding marks here and there and uh, I'm not blending any of this. I'm just making marks and it, it makes kind of a, a crayon mark sort of, I guess you would kind of think of it as a crayon mark. That's what it looks like. Not smooth. It's uh, kind of scratchy and bumpy, but it's really fun to mark make with these Stabilo woodies. Super fun. That has, I don't know, I bought it in a set and it has a special sharpener that comes with it because you wouldn't be able to sharpen these in a regular sharpener. Um, I think it also comes with some type of a brush, but it's been too long. I can't remember. I took them out and put them in this little plastic container because I got tired of the thing that they were in. I kind of switch everything to plastic containers so I can stack them up, put them in drawers. So yeah, just lots of fun mark making, uh, adding color to the background, adding uh, white and um, making it more interesting. It was, it was fun. This one was a fun one. In fact, all the ones I've done so far have been fun. Uh, like I said, you guys should play along. It's fun. It's lots of fun. So then I decided maybe I needed some more uh, white and maybe some drips or something on the one side, the side that has the lighter, uh, doesn't have the shadow. And so I took this, uh, ink that is, it's India ink, it's white India ink. And I just let it drip down that, that one piece in the middle with the, uh, orange and pink dots is watercolor paper. So it's thicker than the other stuff. And it, it gave kind of a guide for where that ink would drip down it. And then I did another one over to this side, which is against, uh, I guess, I guess the digital paper maybe, but it, 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 uh, flowed pretty well in that diagonal and, uh, just brought up that light a little bit because I'm playing, I'm just having fun. So I do use the water to make it drip a little bit more and make it spread a bit. Um, I added like some little dot, dot type things and then spread them. And then in some cases I blot back a little bit if it's too wet. And I got to, of course, get this thing dry completely. And it's, it's pretty fun. It's pretty cool. I decided to go around the edges with some black permanent ink to uh, just give it a border because I, I feel like things need that for some reason. It's just one of my weird little quirks. <laughs> uh, sometimes I put a background, a whole backing on it. And actually as dirty as the back of this is, I probably should have done that. But um, I just went around the edges with ink. I have to do something about the back if I give it away to someone. It's dirty. They're dirty. So then, of course, I when I do tags, I like to add fibers. This is a black organza ribbon. And then I have some black hemp twine as well. I like the, the, uh, the contrast of fibers as well. Like, is it thick? Is it thin? Is it translucent? Is it opaque? Is it feel rough? Uh, I like to put more than one fiber on my tags so that you get some contrast in that as well, because, you know, I could really get into doing a whole, the whole fiber thing <laughs> if I let myself go crazy and get a bunch of fibers and start weaving. I mean, there's all kinds of things that I would like to do as the creative maker person that I am. <laughs> it just sounds fun, but yeah, it would be another whole big investment to get into that. And so I haven't jumped, I haven't jumped in, but it does sound fun. So then I was thinking about on this one perspective and how something is not slanted if your perspective is different. If you were to turn this then and not, then not see the edges, it wouldn't look as slanted, right? It's perspective. It's how you're looking at something. And that applies to so many things in our lives. Our perspective of how something that someone said is, or our perspective of a picture that we saw and what we thought about it, or our perspective about what's on CNN and whether it's true or not. Perspective is a huge thing in our lives that we should pay more attention to. So I decided to, to type out the word perspective and put it on there because that's what I was thinking about as I was doing this. Um, you obviously don't need a word on abstract. I mean, that, that kind of gives away the, it gives away the, 
<laughs> the secret of what you were trying to make. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, comment, all that, please. And here comes your pictures of close-ups. Bye-bye.